So, Clint Boyer's 2020 season. Why 2020 though, and why Clint Boyer? Well, for that we'll have to go back to the day when I became a NASCAR fan, April 3rd, 2020. Probably. I don't actually remember what date I became a NASCAR fan, but it's probably around that. Anyway, what happened that day? Well, I watched a video by Slapshoes, absolute legend by the way, then I watched this one. And at that point I was like, hmm, NASCAR, pretty cool, I want to watch an actual race. So I googled it, and me not knowing absolutely nothing about NASCAR, I saw iRacing Invitational and thought, yeah, that's probably NASCAR. So I tuned into Fox or FS1 at, at a time I don't remember and saw this. Hmm, yeah, that's racing. I didn't understand it, yet I loved it. I missed next week's race at Virtual Dover, but managed to watch the final virtual race at the Virtual North Wicksboro. And this one scene, this one scene made me decide what team, what number, what driver I wanted to follow and support for the past three years. Well. Oh, they were talking to me. <laughs> what are you? You're Whoa. moving. What? Are you, you're crowding me. That wasn't me. What do you mean it wasn't you? I'm on the uh, outside of you. Watch out. Three wide. No, don't go three wide. Whoever that is. You're in the way. If they didn't saw, uh, follow practice. Oh, oh got, got one spinning. The way these two drivers in this clip just let their personalities show and act, just act like two old men bickering with each other. The way that Boyer says, you're on the way, so uncaring to me, it's just so hilarious and perfect. Or maybe I just found his old man laugh way too funny. <laughs> anyway, let's move on to the next race, which by this point I had realized that C19 had affected the whole world, including NASCAR, which was why this race looked real and all the other races I watched didn't. But yeah, the return to real racing, Darlington. The date is May 17th. 2020, the long anticipated return of NASCAR, as this is the first time that Goodyear Rubber will meet pavement at over 115 miles an hour since March 8th at Phoenix. But first, let's take a look at the four races that happened before the C19 lockdown. So yeah, as there's every other season, we start at Daytona, and we will be looking at the Bush Clash first as it's a pretty funny race, and a quick explanation for those who don't know what the Bush Clash is, it used to be a race when all the poll winners from the previous season got together for a big show for the fans before the real Daytona 500. This was the last original clash we got, as the next race it was hosted on the Daytona road course, and the race after that it was on the absolute hot garbage trash fire that is LA. Did put on a pretty good show though to be fair. If you want a more in-depth history of the clash, go watch LA Productions video on it. Now, clash time. Cars best, ready to roll, and the green flag is out. The Bush Clash is underway. The first couple laps was just side by side racing. Boy would have plenty of nice time at the front, pushing whoever was in front of him at the time. As for the rest of the field, first time cars were all on one lane on top, and the rest of the field was on the bottom, trying to make the race interesting. Do you want to know why they can't catch each other? Well, it's because of some mathematics scenario dynamics I kind of understand, but don't understand well enough to where I could explain it. It wasn't until lap 25 when things got interesting again. Pit stops. Boyer came in second and came out third in his group, and we would have a caution. Fantastic, that would put Boyer at the front and bunch the field back up. As for too fast entering the pits on his stop, we're back under green. And remember that guy that started on the back? row Denny Hamlin look where he is this time we got some good side-by-side -side racing four or five laps that is once again single file some boring pit stops on lap 47 nothing really changed blah 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 by lap 62 however stops everything started getting interesting again they got back to side-by-side -side racing Boyer would mostly stay mid-pack during this run until lap ahead of time when it's gonna run out so they'll fill oh, it yeah. oh. turn that up and Sorry, Jane. Oh, oh, Kyle man. Busch almost oh. saved it. He collects Logano, and he's in the wall with Keselowski. Thankfully, Boyer stayed near the back and got through it no problem. And we started on lap 72, and if you've seen this race, you know what's about to happen. So I'll just let the clip play out. Chris Gabart, the crew chief, would rather walk to victory lane 
then the care center. Down. Oh! Ryan Newman came down and everybody behind piles up! Pure talent. Boy managed to just slip by down on the bottom and missed the catastrophe that was happening above him, meaning he was good for the first overtime restart. Green flag. Two to go. Everybody away clean that time. Almost hey. turned him again. Man, this is wild back here on the back straightaway. Got Boyer giving a big, oh. Hamlet yeah, around. around. I bet that fender caused that right rear tire to go down. They wrecked 12 cars. That is some eye racing rod car bottom split stupidity levels of incompetency. Boyer just got clipped by Hamlet. I mean, he didn't pick up any major damage, meaning he would be just one of one of six cars that would still be in the race, one of which was off the lead lap. And <laughs> green, white, checker. He got control. Now, now all he has to do is watch what kind of run comes from behind. Can he put a block without causing? Blend the race. Three wide. Look at the speed Jones has with that car all bent up. And it's Newman at the white flag. Jones with the most damaged car in the race. He's in the front. Now, can Denny Hamlin? Dylan slipped up high. Is Denny Hamlin going to make a move on him and still try to win this race? Doesn't look like it. He's going to push his teammate to the win. Eric Jones is going to win the Bush Clash with a car that's ready for the dumpster. So, out of six cars racing, Boyer finished third. I guess it's above average. All right, well, that's that stupid race done. Let's move it on to the Daytona 500. Boy, it's the Daytona 500, the biggest race of the season, the one everyone wants to win. This race needs absolutely no introduction, so I won't give it one. Boyer is lining up at 29th today, coming from mid-pack, so let's see what he can do. Right. Dale Earnhardt Jr. waves the green flag. The 62nd Daytona 500 is underway. Well, the first couple of laps was pretty normal Generation 6 Super Speedway race. As in, the two lanes turned into one massive train on the top, which is going so fast together that no one can pull out and make it interesting. During this run, Boyer fell all the way back to, well, the back. Now, this isn't as bad as it seems, as falling back usually is safer in the case of a big crash, and being the back means you can run half throttle and save fuel. Skipping ahead to lap 20, we got a caution for rain, and after a small wait, the rain went away and we got back on the green. This time, we actually got some good side-by-side -side racing with the two of Brakosowski and the ten of Eric Amarola trading the lead. Boyer was still in the back in a separate line, saving fuel and staying safe. Around lap 54, they got single file and things got boring. Then things got exciting again when the 24 William Byron went for a ride. That would leave him with just, just two laps pitted. to go in stage one. Two laps to race to the end of stage one as Chase Elliott and Jimmy Johnson lead them toward turn one. Bush was going to poke to the outside, try to take it three wide. Yeah, he and Matt Benedetto had to look up high. Jimmy Johnson with Stein and the stage one winner. Chase Elliott over Alex Bowman, Eric Almarola, Joey Logano, Good job, buddy. and Jimmy Thanks, Johnson. Wow, it's been exciting this end to the stage. Uh, Boyer finished 32nd, and he came out 32nd after pit stop. So let's just move on to stage two. Geico restart zone, where the leader has the option anywhere in that area to hit the gas and bring them to green. And now we're going to see what those Toyotas can do since they've got that track position. The start of stage two was pretty interesting, even getting some three wide racing, but having a decent amount of side by side action as well. Boyer may have been back in 37th with his teammate Kevin Harvick, but then we were starting to heat up at the front. However, we got a caution for poor Quinn Hoof. Hashtag rip Starcom. After the restart, Boyer was up to 24th, but dropped back later, and again, we actually got some good side by side racing. They stayed side by side all the way up until lap 117, and then things got single file again. Some drivers tried to make some moves to win the stage, but because of the way the aerodynamics worked, they couldn't. Boyer would bring home 27th for stage 2. So, final stage, about 65 laps. Let's see what Boyer can do when it hits crunch time. Third and final stage of the 62nd 
Daytona 500. Things are about to heat up right here, Mike. This is it. This is what they've been waiting for. Congratulations to those guys up front that have put themselves in position to try to control the end of this race. This race was only getting better as we got more three wide pack racing and while they did get back to side by side they kept things pretty interesting as the sun started to set over Daytona Beach. Meanwhile Boyer was leading a separate pack staying out of the heat and out of trouble. With 31 laps to go, Boyer and his group came down and made their last pit stop to the end of the race. Nothing was stopping these guys from keeping it interesting, not even the 47 of Ricky Stenhouse spinning would stop them. After pit stops, the 14 would cycle up to 5th, with there now being two groups of cars resulting from the pit stops. Once the two packs had become one, Clint fell back to 10th and they got back to side-by-side -side action. Trouble! Hey, Greg. Here's the big one! And there's what all the drivers have been trying to avoid, yet the fans have been wanting. Yes, indeed, there goes half the field. Only about five cars are out of the race, however. And for those wondering, yes, Boer did make it through this by the skin of his teeth. I mean, come on, could you have made that any closer? This brought out the red flag, and once we got back underway, he was up to seventh with 10 to go. Second, Daytona 500. Ryan Newman leads them toward turn one. We got some good racing between the 6 of Ryan Newman and the 22 of Joe Logano for about 3 laps until some back markers wrecked out. Run it back, 4 to go now with the 14 in 13th. Logano on the front row, green flag. Not a great start by Denny Hamlin right there. Later on, the 11 of Denny Hamlin was up in fighting for the lead. Denny Hamlin, can he put the block on? Oh, car. Oh, 77. Oh, <laughs> That was right. Wow, talk about aggressive. And again, Boyer made it through that one, so don't worry. That caution pushed us into NASCAR overtime. To explain what that means, it's essentially a two lap dash to the end. If you get a caution before the la final lap comes out, you try again. If you get a caution after the final lap, the race is over at the time of caution. Didn't get it, doesn't matter. We're going to go green with just two laps. The 14 car is sitting fifth. 18 lead lap cars trying to win the Daytona 500. Green flag. Oh, cars got loose, spun some tires, contact, is that Boyer? And McDowell. Oh, man. Oh, no. <laughs> you gotta be kidding me. Okay, and from your information, that 34 car is now a Daytona 500 champion. Anyway, that puts us to the back, but thankfully no major damage. Let's try it again. 14th, back in 16th, another two laps to go. Coming here. To Nothing. the inside, Newman to the front. Nothing Denny Hamlin could do. What can Ryan Blaney now do? Not at all. Ryan Newman off turn four for the final time. Blaney to the outside, oh. to the inside. Here comes Hamlin up the outside. Wow. Crash into the wall, into the air, up. goes Newman. Upside down. In a shower of sparks on his roof, Ryan Newman comes across the line, fourth. Thankfully, he was okay. okay. And if you noticed, Clint Boyer brought it home a sixth. Pretty impressive. Anyway, I just realized I wrote two full pages of script, so I'm going to wrap up these next three races pretty quickly.
March 1st to 28th, somewhere between those two dates, America and NASCAR shut down due to C-19. You know what that means, it's time to look at the E-NASCAR Pro Confrontational iRacing Series. After the lockdown, NASCAR decided they should host a 7 race on the virtual racing program iRacing. And somehow they got Fox to agree to show it on live television. Where was given a bigger driver slash broadcaster role during this, actually being inside the Fox studio. Joining him in the driver broadcasting role would be 4 time NASCAR champion and previous rival Jeff Gordon. The combination of those two along with the duo of Mike Joy and Larry Mack made for a very interesting and good commentating crew. Now, let's hop into the NASCAR iRacing Pro Rotational Series. Today, Boyer is starting 11, and a little side note here, the feature driver of the 14 car Chase Briscoe was actually in this race, starting 6th. Um, but anyway, he had a pretty solid start, staying around where he started, 12th, until around lap 20 when Jimmy Johnson was getting around a lap car and started ping-ponging in, well... To at least, Boyer went for a ride, completely killed and clipped straight through that 89 car. Thankfully, because this is a game, Boyer got a reset and a brand new car to race with restart. For this restart, and Hamlin stands on it. We had another wreck on lap 28, and I just want you to watch it and listen to this clip. Oh, we got it. Oh, yeah, got check up, boys. check I'm, up, oh, check, check up. up. <laughs> see, I can't hear the spotter. I'll be your spotter. What happened? Ross Chastain and William Byron got together well, hey, going spotter. into one. It's still green. Oh, it's still green. Past, Jeff. Sorry. <laughs> well, now they're wrecking. That clip is a perfect example of why I like Boyer so much. Whenever they put him on TV, he's bound to say something funny. Anyway, uh, he drove up to and stayed in 12th through two cautions up to lap 59, where then got up to 10th and all the way up to lap 77 when we got a caution for our very own clipboard. Here's what he said. One. Oh, I actually, I saw those guys wrecking the mirror and I thought the caution was coming out. I was just waiting for it. And, and then, you, uh, I you was were the caution. In. Yeah. Yeah. So once again, a new car for Boyer and from the back, 25th. Unfortunately, I couldn't find any footage of it, but in the last 18 laps, Boyer fell all the way up to 16th, so pretty mediocre, but considering where we were, we'll take it. Looks like the next race is, oh goodness, it's Texas. Welcome to Texas Motor Speedway, where we have Kyle Larson, the 5'6 legend, in a very, very big seat. <laughs> I had to point that out, it is too funny. Uh, anyway, Boyer is starting P15 this time, and off the, uh, the off the start, he fell all the way back to last, so I'd say that's a pretty good start. While Fox was under commercial, we had a quote-unquote on the back straight away, according to Boyer. Because of that wreck, he got up to 25th, and also keep in mind, we didn't get a caution for all those cars that wrecked out. However, we did get a caution for an unrelated wreck on lap 27. On the restart, Boyer stayed around the 30s until we got a caution. And he gave us this good clip. Come on, man! <laughs> hey, Clint, you missed that sign in that box, buddy. Well, I can't get used to driving through somebody's <laughs> car to find it, can't find the box. Boy, Let I messed that go. up bad. Clint, I, you've been driving oh. through people's cars your entire career. <laughs> Larry. Oh, come, come on, boys. The sign wasn't there. Again, this is the funniest man in NASCAR, hands down. <laughs> Uh, nothing really changed on the restart. He still hung around the 30s, so let's just skip ahead to lap 116 when Boyer caused a big wreck on the back stretch. We'd restart with just five laps to go. Behind him, cargo oh, spinning, Bobby Labonte getting spun. Now, iRacing can stay green if that car is down. And I guess Clint drove that car hard because in just two laps, he made up, uh, I don't know, nine spots before another caution would come out. Two laps, uh, the 14 is sitting 16th now. We're simply not able to get to that inside lane. And look at what Boren did in the background, by the way. Uh, he recovered up to 11, still finished pretty good. Next race up is going to be the one, the only, the last three Coliseum, Bristol Motor Speedway. Welcome to 
Bristol Motor Speedway, where we have Boyer, for some reason, wearing his teammate Eric Armavola's scheme, and Heat Races, which I'm not going to explain what that is, or cover it, just skipping over it. Uh, Boyer is starting P last during the main event. Off the start, Boyer got a couple of spots, but lost them for a scene that most NASCAR fans have probably seen. Second caution and oh, clamped. John Boyer! What happened? I got bubbled. <laughs> <laughs> well, there's that. Oh, man, geez. this is worse than real life. These guys forget his 150 lap race. Come on, Bubba! <laughs> Stupid thing! <laughs> well, back of the field again. Skipping ahead to lap 60, Boyer had gotten up to 23rd after missing three or four, maybe five wrecks out of the real lot of them. By lap 90, he had gotten up to 16th and stayed there until lap 135 when he said, all right, let's start and start passing people. He missed a late race wreck, and by the end of it, he was up to 11th. Pretty good. Let's just get on to the next race, which is Richmond. Another short track, but a little bit more boring this time. Richmond, what used to be the final race of the regular season and a place that we all know Boyer for. But that's in the past. Today, he is lining up the P at last once again. Richmond. Barney the Flagman throws the green and we're off. After 30 laps and two cautions, Boyer had gotten up to 19th, but that was short-lived as, yes, once again, Boyer got wrecked. Unfortunately, Clint was off the pace due to damage, and while the leaders were having a fun time, Boyer was bored running at the back, having no one to race with. And luckily, he wouldn't have to deal with that for much longer. I'm Never. actually so bored back here, <laughs> I'm gonna start just chiming in. And it makes me feel better to make fun of anybody else right now. Well, I can promise you, these these Wait. broadcasts are not the same without you, so we need you to, to hey, add any content you this can. This just in, buddy. Looks like we've lost the motor. Oh, no. <laughs> she well, she has up. expired. Well, go find it. I can, yeah, I think it's down there in three and four. Oh, that's a shame. Dead in the water. That's gonna be a P last for Richmond. So let's just move on to the next track. And I think you know this one, cause it's Talladega. Welcome to the biggest virtual oval on this seven race schedule. 2.66 virtual miles flat all the way around. This time Boyer has a friend, we should say, a previous rival, Jeff Gordon, racing with him today. Clint will be starting a 17. And here we go. Now that Green flag. That's some good form there, isn't it, Mike? Very. Within the first couple of laps, Boyer was up in the top 10, and things only got better by lap 16, where he actually managed to find his way up to second. And then, actually, I'll just let the clip play out. Pay attention to the chemistry between Clint and Jeff. Oh, whoa! Yes, he did. It's yes, the big one. <laughs> Whoa, Man. that was close. Woo! Did, did you, you make see how fast that was? After the restart, Boyer stayed in the mix for the lead, and he actually got the lead for a single lap. The car in front of Boyer is a lap down, so he doesn't count. Oh, no! There you have it. No! Oh, it's blowed up! Oh, are you blowed up, Boyer? Oh, man! you got to be kidding me! He probably should have got out from behind him. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm not laughing. I'm not, <laughs> I'm not laughing. I think I... Oh! Talk about disappointing. Thankfully, we would finish this race, however, because we have a reset. So, drop a new engine in there, we good to go. However, he would be several laps down and was just racing because he could. On lap 56, we would get a caution involving Jeff Gordon, meaning Boyer would beat his friend slash rival. We would get pushed into overtime, and Boyer would get back on the lead lap and would restart 17th. But he made an aggressive mood and finished one spot above Jeff. In 33rd. Wow. Stellar. The next race would be Dover, but since Boyer skipped this one and we're following him, we'll skip it as well. So on to the final race of the iRacing Pro Invitational Series. It's North Wicksboro, in its first step back to real life racing. 
North Wicksboro, we have history, we have Larry Mack wardrobe changes, and we have two old men racing in the same room. Anyways, Boyer is starting last again, meaning it was only up from here. At North Wilkesboro. After only six laps, along with ten laps of caution, and missing a wreck, Clint was got up to 15th in a field of 30 cars, so I say that's, you know, pretty good. After a caution, boy would we start right behind his friend Jeff Gordon. Corey LaJoy to the outside. Don't drive it in too hard, Jeff. Oh, wow, that's a nice corner by Gordon. He's able to bank off of LaJoy. It was. Here comes Clickerman on the outside. By lap 75, Clint had gotten up to 12th, but actually I'll just let this clip play out. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Oh, hit the curb. Uh -oh. oh no, Gord! Oh, Austin! No. Yeah, baby, I made it through! You did? Yeah. That Thankfully, the damage wasn't that bad, and Boy was able to keep on racing. He had gotten up to 6th, and take a listen. You can really tell that he's an old man. I think he did. Good pass. Both hands on the wheel. Oh, Harvick's next. You're all mine. Skipping ahead to lap 124 when we had a caution, Boyer had come in at P7 and came out P9. Here's the restart. Oh, three wide. Oh, what happened? Oh, big wreck. Dang it. Uh-oh. Yeah, they, uh, they... Well, he wouldn't restart completely last because he would leapfrog all the cars that had gone a lap down and it would put him up to 20th or so. I couldn't find the actual starting position, but he would get up to 13th with just 10 laps to go. He would grab one more spot before the end of the race so he would end up finishing 12th. Right, the next race is the return to real life racing and the end to the iRacing Invitational Series. It's the Lady in Black, the Unforgiving, the track where the wall is close, it's Dawn to Raceway. Welcome to Darlington. This track, it's an interesting one. It's one of the oldest and more unique tracks on the NASCAR schedule. And more importantly, it was the first full NASCAR race I watched, as I had merely skimmed through the first two virtual races before this. Now, something to note here, I will be skipping a ton of scenes from these races, mainly because if they don't relate to Boyer, there's really no reason to put them in. But speaking of which, Boyer is starting a 13th. Let's see what he can do after two months of being out of a real race car. Pace car is in. Green flag, NASCAR is back. By the competition caution on lap 30, the 14 was running 14. And when we went back green, Boyer made some passes and broke into the top 10. He had gotten up to 7th before the end of stage 1. Thanks to the 14th pick crew, he would restart to 5th. Albert, you want to get into the rhythm and momentum of the race and here we go back green he would stay in the top eight for all of stage two cycling mostly between fifth and seventh to finish fifth for the final stage boy would mostly keep it in the top 10 and would mostly keep it in seventh However, with 46 laps to go, he fell out of the top 10 and started falling and losing the spots. Just 16 laps later, he would be down in 18th. By 10 to go, the 14 was up to 15th, but as soon as it was looking better, it got worse. Over the fence, over the <laughs> fence, over the fence. I gotta believe- Oh no, it's oh, Boyer! Boyer. That, that's all right, the grill's still up. I, I really, I, it's gonna change the aerodynamics, definitely gonna change the aerodynamics and handling of that race. Sadly, Boy would have to settle with 17th in his first race back. Alright, on to the second Darlington race. Hold up. No, hang on, this time it's different. Somebody turned off the light switch. Same track, different time, same racing. Boy would start fourth, thanks to NASCAR inverting the top 20 from the previous race. So, let's see what he can do with a second champ. At Darlington. While Boya would be able to pass the 22 under green, a caution would come out and his pick crew would get the job done for him with a 13.1 second stop. After the restart, Boya pieced out, pulling a 2 second lead after just 10 laps. At the end of the stage, Boya was just 3.5 seconds in front of second. 
For stage 2, Boyer kept leading and only lost during pit stops on lap 83. But even then, he just drove back up to second, and after another caution, his pick crew got him back to the lead. And he, after that, he never looked back, winning at stage 2. For once, Boyer looks like he might have the car to beat. He would line up fourth for the start of stage 3. So those guys on new tires. That's Newman's spotter. He would stay in fourth and defend behind, but never find the clean air he needed to make some passes. We both got pit stops and a caution around lap 180. After everything was done and said, Boyer lined up at sixth. He got through the chaos and found some clean air, meaning he could finally start making some passes. Well, until lap 196. Oh, Clint Boyer going around. Flat right rear tire. And that'll put the caution out once again. And you can see he's made contact with the outside wall, flatten that right side, push that fender on that right rear tire, causing it to go down. Yep, that sucks. Boyer would stay in the race, but he would restart 23rd. And as said before, the car didn't drive that well when not in the lead. He would only make up two spots, finishing 21st after Rain ended the race early. That really sucks, because Boyer probably could have won that race, or at least finished top 5. Looks like we're staying in the Carolinas, as our next race is in Charlotte for another double header. Boyer is starting 20th day for the longest race of the season. That's right, we're back, it's the Coke 600. 600 miles of remembrance is underway! No pressure, I'm back. Good launch, still there. Clear. All clear. All clear. Clear by one. Clear by one. By lap 28, we had our first caution and restart. Clint was up to 13th by then, and then by lap 49, we had a rain delay, and when we went back green, Boyer was up to 11th. He would hold on and stay in 11th all the way till lap 96, when unfortunately he would lose some spots. A lot of spots. See right here, the 88 really loose. Oh, 14's in the wall. Oh, Boyer has hit it hard. And that will put us under caution at lap 97. Yep, no continuing the race with this one. That's going to be another DNF, which really sucks. So uh, let's just move on to the second Charlotte race. Unfortunately, Boyer would qualify 29th. So coming from a little bit farther back than he did last race. Let's see what he can do in his second try at this race in just four days. Charlotte. By lap 35, Boyer was up to 32nd, and we have a red flag, which would turn this into a night race. They raced out the last 20 laps with Clint finishing 26th. On the start of stage 2, Boyer was able to take advantage of the big checkup by the 18 and able to grab some spots, up to 22nd now. Nothing really to note here, and he stayed in the 20s until lap 24 when we got a caution, and Boyer stayed out, putting him up to 11th. He stayed in that sort of 10th, 11th area for the rest of stage 2. Unfortunately, Clint was all the way back down in 30th for stage 3. Ready, ready, green, green, green. Skipping ahead to lap 155, Boyer had broken into the top 20. Then, with 30 to go, he was up to 16th. And that's it. He didn't move and just finished right there, 16th. The next race is Bristol, and uh, this one, this one's actually a good finish. Boyer is starting 23rd for this one, and I promise he will get a good finish. Green flag in Bristol. Within the first couple of laps, Boyer fell back to 30th, then drove back up to 20th by lap 59. After that, he was still making up spots and passing people, and drove up to and finished 12th for stage 1. By stage 2, he was up to 9th, and then slowly started to drop down to 15th by lap 200. Boyer was back up to 10th after getting ahead of a big wreck on lap 231. He would race out the remaining laps to finish 6th for stage 2. Due to pit stops, Boyer would be back down to 15th for the final stage. He finally broke into the top 10 again on lap 345, and then he was back down to 15th by 100 to go. 50 laps later, he was up to 12th, with 36 to go, Boyer avoided having a couple of spots, and on the restart, he started making up places, being up to 7th with just 20 to go, 
and we got another late race caution and boy was up to fifth it would give us just five laps left in the race and i want to show you three of those five laps. little bump and run there from chase elliott oh, they're up and in the wall here comes keselowski wow. and kyle bush who to go Keslowski Boyer for second from nowhere. White flag, one to go, sponsored by Credit One Bank. Only he's gonna steal another one. Yeah, he is. Two Sundays in a row. Free job. That's right, second out of nowhere. I told you he'd finish good. Anyway, next race is Atlanta. A decently good track for Boyer. Today, he's starting from fifth. Let's see what he can do. Folds of Honor scholarship recipient and Baylor graduate waves the green flag. We're underway in Atlanta. Boyer fell down to eighth by the competition caution on lap 25. On the restart, he got all the way back up to third and was back down to fifth by lap 40. Boyer stayed in the top five all the way to the end of stage one, fighting his way back up to third and was in contention for second. For stage two, Clint's pick crew got him out first. The quarterback now is all over your road, you bumper tandem. Outside 19. Outside, outside. Clear high if you need it, clear high if you need it. He kept the lead for a whole 79 laps. And to be fair, he did give Martin Truex Jr. a run for his money, pulling a dominant lead on the rest of the field. He would lose the lead again with just 25 to go in the stage, and he would continue to lose spots, finishing 9th in the end of Stage 2. For Stage 3, he'd restart to 8th. Green, green, green. Big push all line here. Tight. Still there. Clear the night. Clint stayed 8th for 60 laps, not going up or down. Things finally changed after pit stops around 55 to go, moving up a whole one spot to 7th. Okay, uh, I'm going to skip to when he changed spots again, which will be 19 to go. Boyer fell to 9th, then 5 laps later the right rear tire fell apart and we had a pit and he lost a bunch of spots. That's disappointing. After he got back on track, he was down in 25th. Doing his best, Boyer finished 20th. A real bad finish for a top 10 car, so let's just move on from this poor finish onto Martinsville. The paperclip, the most intense track on the schedule, arguably. Welcome to Martinsville, the smallest and actually oldest track on the schedule. Today, Boyer is starting fourth. Let's see what he can do. Of 1,000 left turns, 500 laps, at Martinsville. Green flag. By the first caution, he was down to six, and he kept falling for a while before driving back up to third around lap 50. By lap 70, Clint had made the pass for a second. He kept it all the way to the end of stage one and on to stage two, but he lost around lap 166. He kept falling and was down to 10th by a 40 to go in stage 2. By the end of stage 2, he was down in 19th. He finally got that back up to 15th by lap 335, but was back down to 17th all the way until lap 398 when a caution finally came out and he started making passes. He had gone up to 12th by lap 412. Around lap 425 or so, he had fallen back to 15th again. And with just 55 laps to go, he was down to 17th, where he stayed for the rest of the race. Honestly, after the second third of the race, it's like he fell off a mountain or something. It is, I don't know what happened. The next race, well, let's just say it's an interesting one. Welcome to Homestead, Miami and the return of fans in the grandstands. Yes, for the first time in 98 days, fans are back at the racetrack. Kind of interesting, but not relevant to Boyer, who is starting 12th. And with the green flag in hand, Florida Governor Ron DeSantis. Green flag. Off of you, two is 7 to 22. He's still inside of it. He does have help. 18 coming to you, half back. In line. Within the first five laps, Boyer is up to 10th, and we have a caution for rain. Oh, looks, sorry, no, that actually looks like a red flag. Uh, I guess we'll go ahead and skip ahead to when they go back green. 
Uh, he stayed 10th for the restart to lap 25 when he then got up to 9th. Glint started slowly gaining spots and was up to 7th by lap 30. He stayed in 7th all the way up until lap 47 when he dropped back to 8th, and that's where he stayed all the way to the end of stage 1. On the restart, Boyer fell to 12th and then rode there for a couple laps before getting back up into the top 10 on lap 106. He stayed there for 48 laps before getting passed by his teammate, falling down to 16th for the end of stage 2. After the restart to stage 3, a caution and 32 laps of racing, Boyer was up to 12th. With around 35 to go, Clint was able to fight and pass Martin Truex Jr. for 11th. He got up in the top 10 for a couple of laps before he fell back down to finish 11th. If I'm being honest, even just skimming through this race, it was pretty boring, so, uh... Anyway, I don't think it's gonna be any boring at the next track we go to, because it's Talladega Super Speedway. 2.66 miles of flat-out racing. Welcome to Talladega Super Speedway, where we have absolutely no appearance footage at all. Boyer starting 10th, let's get this race underway. Green flag, Ravens quarterback from Alabama, Marlon Humphrey. Sends them off for 500 miles. Within the first 10 laps, he was down in 28th, most likely an effort to not crash out early. From there, Boyer ran into the 25th to 30th range through two cautions, 46 laps, and rain to finish 24th in stage 1. Thanks to pit stops, Clint would restart 12th. He'd stayed up in the mix for the lead until lap 70 or so when his lane started falling back, and so did he. By the end of the shuffling, he was down, running near the 30th to 35th place. We got a restart with just two to go in stage two, where he would grab some spots to finish 19th. Boyer would restart 9th for stage three. He stayed 10th until we got a caution, where he would then fall back to around 15th. Then we got another caution, where he would then restart 5th. Once again, he fell back to around 15th, staying near the back of the lead pack. He would keep in the 15s, getting into the top 10 around 14 to go. Clint would fall back to 10th to the 15th range until we got a caution, which would set us up for a 2 to go restart. And Boyer, well, he was restarting 8th. Green flag! Stenhouse doesn't get going on the restart. That's going to allow Kevin Harvick, Chris Buescher, Brad Keselowski on the outside to pull ahead. Not good for Blaney. Well, Ty goes. Harvick got away from oh, Buescher. Reckon. But up front, they're racing for the win. Blaney's the ahead. in the back, and Blaney is the leader. Eric Jones with help. Here comes Almirola. Crash into the wall. I think it's Stenhouse. It might be Blaney. Unfortunately, Blair was involved in that wreck into turn three, meaning he would finish 25th. Yikes. Okay, that's disappointing. Okay, up until that moment. Well.
Welcome back to Daytona, where it all started, and this is where it ends. The regular season, I mean, not the NASCAR season. After this, we have a 10-race playoff, which I'm not going to explain, because it's not actually that relevant to this video. Since we are talking about points, we may as well talk about where Boyer is in points. He's sitting 11th, heading into Daytona with a pretty good points cushion, which pretty much guarantees he's into the playoffs if he doesn't finish this race. Speaking of which, he is starting 14th. At the end of stage one and stage two, that can help someone on their playoff hopes. Getting ready to kick off the end of the regular season from Daytona. Within the first five laps, Boyer did the same thing he had done for the past two Super Speedway races and dropped to the back for safety, finishing 34th for Stage 1. For Stage 2, he stayed at the back again until pit stops where he would then grab a bunch of spots due to a big brain strategy, cycling out to 19th. And skipping ahead again, he slowly made up spots and got up to, top, to the top 5 with just 5 to go in the stage, running 2nd on the outside lane by this point, making some pretty good moves to finish 3rd for Stage 2. He stayed up in the mix for a couple laps before falling back to 26th, where he stayed there for a while, until a caution came out on lap 144, where he would get back into the mix of things on the restart. Could it be the final restart? 13 laps to go from Daytona! Making up some spots before, well, I'll let the clip play out. Block! He's in the fence! Up into the wall he goes! The 18 also in the wall! Eric Jones gets caught up in it as well! The big one does happen! The 47, Ricky Stenhouse Jr., McDowell. Probably a good thing he started charging, because if he didn't, he may not have made it through that big wreck. Off the restart, he would stay in the mix of things, and once again, very closely miss a huge wreck. Can he save it? William the Byron, they're wrecking. The, the 22 coming. goes around. Hold the brake, hold the brake, hold the brake. Oh, the going to come out now. Big, big wreck, wreck behind him. But that was so incredibly close. Trust me. Watching that live, it was insane all right uh that wreck would put us into nascar overtime leaving us with just two laps left and i'll just let the clip play out Denny hamlin's best friend right now is matt benedetto i think with his position matt's in he'd be happy to push that 11 car to the win but that inside line is organized and they're going by Denny on the inside clint boyer pushing that 24 byron to the lead up the racetrack a block for the 11. Clint Boyer goes up. Here comes Christopher Bell in the 95. What was the number you mentioned earlier, Steve? How many times at Super Speedway races has Martin Truex Jr. come up a little bit short? Car in the fence, hard. Oh, hard. Clint Boyer in the 14, slamming into the wall, fighting on the inside for the lead and the win. They run behind him again. Stay with your teammates. They continue to fight. You're clear. Through three and four, William Byron looking for his first ever win in the NASCAR Cup Series. A win, a secured spot in the playoffs. William Byron's going to win. And that's where things end. Unfortunately, he would finish 19th in what could have easily been a top five if he didn't try squeezing Denny Hamlin in the 11 car. But again, we don't really need a good finish to get into the playoffs. So here are the 16 drivers that boy will be fighting in the playoffs. Now I'm going to not mention this for the next three races. Now, you're probably wondering why I included both Darlington and Richmond in the opening card. Well, that's because skimming through both these races, they're both very boring from Boyer's perspective. At Darlington, he started 9th and he ran 9th to 12th for the, almost the entire race until some unlucky pits up knocked down 18th, which didn't even matter since he just drove straight back up to 10th for the end of the race. At Richmond, he started 11th and ran top 10 for all of stage 1. For stage 2 and 3, he fell out of the top 10, and worse, he was down in 15th. With 27 to go, Boyer got up to 10th and stayed there until the end of the race. See? Super boring. I didn't even make a cut. That was one entire audio clip. Anyway, the next track that we're going to is the return to... Welcome back to Bristol. Short track racing, bumping and rubbing, along with the second place finish last time, Boyer might actually be able to get another good finish out of this one. He is starting 11. The cutoff race, underway, under the lights at Bristol. 
Within the first 25 laps, Boyer had gotten up to 7th to 10th range, but by lap 75, he was down to 18th, and he lost one more spot to finish 19th for the stage 1. Boyer hung around 15, 16, and 17th range for the better part of stage 2 until a late race caution put him in a good position to finish 8th at the end of the stage. The good fortune would continue into stage 3, with get him being able to get up to 7th by lap 300. Just 12 laps later, he would grab another spot to get up to 6th. Then we got pissed off to around lap 335, and Clint would be able to cycle out 4th. We got a caution with around 100 laps to go. He would restart 2nd, first car on the bottom. He would stay in 4th for 43 laps until he got dropped to 5th, then 6th with just 50 to go. It would stay like this for the rest of the race, meaning he would finish 6th. Now, back to talking about points. Bristol is what we call a playoff elimination race, which means they eliminate 4 drivers from the 16 driver playoff field that they picked out in Daytona. Admittedly, he was just 3 points away from elimination, but actually, I don't care, never mind, the next race is Las Vegas. Las Vegas, probably the fastest and my second favorite mile and a half on the schedule, but that's besides the point. Boyer starting sixth, here we go. Vegas, round two of the playoffs is underway. Within the first 20 laps, Boyer had sailed out into 11th until we get a caution 10 laps later, which didn't change much, meaning he would continue to run 11th, having a pretty good battle for the top 10, but he would come up short for the end of stage 1. Things were looking better in stage 2, with Boyer starting 6th and staying 6th for 10 or so laps, until he fell to 10th just a couple laps later. Unfortunately, he was down to 16th by lap 130, and late in stage 2, Clint started charging, getting to 10th with just 10 to go in the stage. He grabbed one more spot for the end of the stage to finish at 9th. Under caution, the Piku grabbed him 3 spots to start running 6th now. Top 5. It looks like Chase Elliott once again. But once things had shuffled out, Clint was down to 10th. He dropped one more spot with 52 to go. Then things got worse when a caution came out during a pit cycle and Boyer dropped all the way down to 23rd with 24 laps to go. However, we would get another caution which would give Clint's pit crew a chance to nab him a whole 8 spots. He's up to 12th now. Back up through the gears they go! Kurt Busch with an incredible launch! Another caution that'll put us into overtime. Boyer is still 12th. Trying to time it just right. Kurt with another great launch! Gonna be able to pull down and clear this 21 before they can even get a push up to him. And why did Bowman not go to the inside there? There was nowhere to go for Bowman, and now Denny Hamlin fighting for second to the inside of the 21. Side One by lap side. to go. Side by side for second. He drifts up the track a bit. Kurt Busch, the 2004 Cup champion, is gonna win in his hometown. Bush wins in Vegas. A 12th place finish. I mean, I guess it didn't really make any moves, so... Mm. Anyway, here are the points. To further explain what is happening here, this is the top 8, and Boyer is here. Doing some very hard math, we can determine that he is 11 points back from where he needs to be to make it to the next round of the playoffs. But that probably won't happen, considering the next race is the return to Talladega. Welcome back to Talladega Super Speedway, the final big track we go to this season. Can Boyer make up the 11 points he needs by the end of this? Let's find out. Speedway, green flags in the air. He will get in front of whichever line he thinks is going to move the fastest and try to stay up front and dictate what's going to happen with this race. You're also going to hear side oh, drafting is already. Christopher Bell, I believe it's Christopher yeah, Bell. Yeah, sure enough, Bell around. In the back of the pack, the eight also involved. Best stock car races in the world, sure. Boyer stayed in and near the top 10 for 40 laps, two cautions and some minor glitching from the official full replay. Once he dropped out of the top 10, however, he went to the back of the main pack and things started to get a little bit too spicy for him, so he dropped all the way back. To at least, it was the right call. 88 tries to go to the oh! outside! And around they go! The 10 of Eric Almirola up in the air is the 18 of Kyle Busch! Ryan Blaney is caught in it as well. For stage two, he stayed at the back of the lead pack, like last year, until the first caution. 
then Boyer started getting back up into the mix. He stayed in the mix and started leading the second line by lap 111. Things definitely started heating up as we got closer to the end of the stage, and actually, I'll just show you the clip. Yep, sadly, Boyer would be involved in this wreck. He would finish 33rd, putting him 17 points behind the cut line now. He would have one more shot to get into the next round of the playoffs at the Charlotte Roval, which is a road course, and Boyer is pretty good there, so we'll just have to see what happens. Welcome back to Charlotte, where we'll be making some left turns and some right turns, where we'll be starting 11th, and remember, he's in a pretty tough point situation. It's a cut race, the elimination race from the Charlotte Roval, and the green flag's in the air. By lap 5, he was up to 9th, and by lap 10, he was all the way up to 3rd. We then got a caution, and Boyer got a restart and a half. Oval. Two cars came to pit road and put slicks on. Let's see what happens to those two, the six of Ryan Newman and the 13 of Ty Dillon. Well, a lot of cars came to pit road, but some cars put a 13. And I actually think this is the end of the racetrack where they have the most speed. Look right there. Lead right here on the left side of the screen. Clint Boyer has taken it away from Martin Truex Jr. Oh, and that sends. I told you he was good on road courses. However, he wasn't good enough for Ty Dillon of all people, for, who for context is a pretty subpar driver, and sorry Ty Dillon fans, it's just the truth, but he was going on the absolute run of his life, passing Boyer with 5 to go in stage 1. There would be a pit stop after that however, and a caution would come out in an opportune time putting him all the way down to 29th for stage 1. To quickly sum up stage 2, since I really want to move on to stage 3, all Clint did was just try and make up spots. He would start at 21st, then 10 laps after that he was up to 14th, 5 laps later he was up to 8th, then 7th, 3 laps later, then caution, then 13th, and stage end. With both a good restart and pit stop, Boyer was up to 4th. Nothing to really mention these next couple laps other than this stellar save. He grabbed 3rd with a mistake from the 2 of Brad Kozlowski, which would put him in a good position for a lap 67 restart. A bunch of people stayed out during this while Boyer came down and pitted, putting him all the way back to 20. Laney fires out of there. Right behind him, Ryan Pre. I can't tell if he has a flat left front or just a lot of damage on the nose. Yeah. yeah. Broke. Oh. Damn it. Such a great race car, Dylan. And you can see the nose where the hood is kind of caved in. So he said they're broke. Whatever the issue is, it's. Watching this back, I wouldn't figure out what broke at the time, but whatever it was, it would send him back to 33rd. By this point, Clint was now 75 points below the cut line. I don't know how that's even possible, but I also can't do math very well. It would mean that he would have to win the race to make it to the next round of the playoffs. With 15 to go, Boyer was up to 28th. Three laps later, there was a caution, and he restarted 16th thanks to some pit strategy. James Elliott that's out front. his cars on the racetrack and then had that contact on the racetrack a slow pit stop relegated into the back but they have not quit fighting he's marched his way through the field without power steering or with power steering issues for a majority of the middle part of this race you're telling me that somehow clint boyer is hustling this car around a very challenging track without power steering at race speed i don't believe that i just don't that it boggles the mind uh, it even boggles the mind that he passed people. He made a pass for 13th a lap later, then 12th a lap after that. 11th coming out of turn 8th, then 10th thanks to the 18 of Kyle Busch pitting. And that was the end of the road. He would finish 10th and miss the next round of the playoffs by 46 points. A big disappointment, but a sort of good note to end it off on. Before we leave North Carolina, I want to point out a picture that was taken after Clint got out of his car. This one. Slap Shoes also talked about it. He talked about how Boyer was looking back at his whole career. However, I think of it a little bit differently. I think Boyer was 
exhausted, obviously, from sitting in a hot car, trying to turn a steering wheel without power steering, making passes, keeping up, and knowing that all of it was basically for nothing. However much he did, it was impossible. He wasn't winning that race. He wasn't making it to the next round of the championship. He wasn't going to win that championship. His final shot at the Daytona 500 was over. His final chance of racing competitively in NASCAR was over. He had announced his retirement at this point, and I think all of those emotions that Clint had boiled into this just one image here, which most people laughed at. Sorry, let's move on to something more cheerful. For example, Clint's hometown track, Kansas. Yes, Cindy, this is Boyer's hometown track. In his final season, the fans formed a little 14 on the back stretch where the campers are, the track put up a sign, and asked her to let him pace the field for a little while. A nice little tribute. Anyway, he's starting 12th. Here we go. From the start to the competition caution on lap 27, Boyer stayed in 12th and dropped back to 13th before the caution came out. After the restart, he was up to 9th. He slowly started falling back to 12th again where he'd finished for stage 1. Boyer's pick crew doing a fantastic job once again got him out 9th for stage 2. He rode there for a little bit, fell back to 10th, then got back up to 9th again around at lap 113. We got pit stops with around 30 to go in the stage. Clint came in 9th and cycled down to 17th. He was up to 15th before the caution came out, and the pit crew got him back up to 10th, where he finished for stage 2. For the final stage, he is starting 13th. He's leading the field. Logano, Almirola, Bowman, Hamlin. Pretty good shove here from Eric Almirola behind the 18. Skipping ahead to lap 200, he had made his way up to 8th, but that wouldn't matter as unfortunately we would get a bad restart a couple laps later, which would bring back to 14th with just 60 to go. With 28 to go, he would, and I'm just assuming here because they didn't mention it at all, make a pit stop and it would leave him 26th one lap down. And for those wondering, no, it was not mentioned on the broadcast. So that's where he'd finish, 26th. Unfortunate, but next race, we get to see him lead his final laps. Welcome to a very cloudy and very wet day in Dallas. For this one, Boyer is starting 21st. In command of the race. Into turn one for the first time this weekend for these drivers. Boyer ran around the 20s until the second caution of the race, when his pick crew got him out 12th and found himself in 6th by the time a caution and red flag came out for rain. Then we waited two whole days until we got the race back going again. And look who is somehow running up first. Johnson up front and green flags back out in Texas. A scattered start, didn't it, guys? Back there about 10th, about the 7th or 8th row. Nobody's pulled up. He ran first pretty uncontested until a lap 69 restart where the 19 of Martin Truex Jr. would start duking it out with him. And where it would pull an insanely risky block. This entry made a big arc into turn one, got in real slow. Oh, Tons of momentum on Clint. Clint Smith, a big block. Trying oh, Truex losing the three. What trying, a block. Yeah, trying to win stage one. While it wasn't easy, Clint drove the wheels off that 14 car, beating out Martin Truex Jr. to win the stage, which would be the last of his career. He'd start second for stage two and would fall back to fifth because he got stuck in the outside lane. He would stay there until a caution on lap 30 when his pick crew would get him back up to third. He ran there for 20 or so laps when he got passed again for third, and now he's in fourth. There were pit stops late in the stage, where it came in fourth and came out 11th. He would then hustle the car all the way back up to seventh for the end of stage two. Clint would stay out during pit stops, putting him right there in second for the restart. Start and underway with the final stage. Has him going by on the outside. Clint had confidence in that traction compound. Kyle Busch side draft and slowing the 14 down. Now Boyer going to try to get to that right rear quarter panel. Can't do it. Matty D going to try to take advantage. Drive underneath both of them. 
That would sort of be the end of the battle. He would settle into second, but as Kyle Busch pulled away from the rest of the field, Boyer came with him, keeping the pressure on the 18. Skipping ahead to lap 256, he had to make a pit stop for fuel to make it to the end, and it turned out that he was actually on a different fuel strategy than the 18. For the next couple of laps, it was pretty much the Kyle B. Boyer show, with Boyer just hoping and praying for caution, because I would get everyone back on the same strategy. The lead would come back to him with 52 to go, and he held it until he got a pit again for fuel with 23 to go. He pushed it as long as he could, running it on empty, just hoping for a caution. The caution would never come. Where it would pit, he would come out 18th, and he did his best to drive through the rest of the field. He would finish 17th. But, 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 it, it wasn't that bad of a race. He did lead 89 up to 334 laps and win a stage. So, overall, a win in my book. Welcome to Martinsville, the second to last race of the season and this video. Let's see where Boyer ends up after starting P16. Remember the championship four. Clay Campbell shows him the green flag for racing at Martinsville. Within the first couple of laps, Boyer was up to 13th and made up one more spot before a lap 73 incident, which he was unfortunately involved in. That curve, oh, got a wreck in one and two. Clint Boyer in the 14, and Austin Dillon in the 3 have been collected. Was this Boyer's fault? Yeah, pretty much. He drove down into the 3, and then pretty much spun himself. He'd restart 28th and would find himself 18th by lap 100. A caution would come out 5 laps later, and after some strategy, Clint would restart 4th. He'd finish 13th for stage 1 after 21 laps and 1 caution, and some small brain strategy would put him back down to 29th for stage 2. He would get back up to 10th before another caution and another bad pit stop would put him back to 22nd. However, with some big passes and the run of his life, he would get up to 12th before the end of stage 2. For stage 3, Boyer would get up to 9th and stay there for around 60 laps until he got passed and was back down to 10th, where he then stayed until a restart on lap 359 when he got up to 11th. Akasha came out with 100 to go, and at this point, Boyer was up to 8th. He got up to 7th thanks to his picker, then grabbed two more spots by 80 to go. With 50 to go, he got a hectic restart which put him back to 8th, where he then rode for the rest of the race. And it just so happened that the driver Boyer passed was Kyle Busch. And if you know what happened, well, you know what happened. Do it! The final turn! Go get it! He needs the position! Oh, Harvick spins the 18! Turns into the 18! He turns as well! The 18! is the start finish line and Harvick is going to be out of the playoff. Oh well, also I'll take this up where any Winston Cup point format finish. Anyway, the next race is the last one, Phoenix. Welcome to the last race of the NASCAR season in page 16 of the script, but that's besides the point. Phoenix, a track which Clint Boyer had some rather famous moments from, but we're only going to be talking about 2020 today. For the final race of Boyd's career, he is starting ninth. Here we go. Gano has a championship. They're looking for the second. Coming to the green flag, the championship's underway in the desert. By lap 10, he was up to 8th, and thanks to his picker, he was up to 6th for the restart on lap 37. Chosen the inside line, and fires off. Down to the apron, three, four, and five wide as they come into turn one. After things had settled out, Boyer was once again back to eighth, where he rode out for the rest of stage one. With his pick grid having him four spots, he'd restart fifth for stage two. Zone. Logano and Hamlin making up that front row and a great launch again for Joey Logano. Look at him fan out. By lap 100, he was down to 7th, where he remained until pit stops around lap 70 into the stage. He came in 7th and came out 15th. He was up to 14th before Akash came out, where he then napped 2 spots to finish 12th in stage 2. Within the first couple of laps in stage 3, Boyer hung around in 13th. Then, with 93 to go, he got back up to 12th, and Clint stayed there for all 47 laps or so. We got pit stops around 55 to go, Boyer came in 12th and came out 22nd. However, after that, he would get up to 16th. And five laps later, he would ironically be in 14th. Then, Clint practically hit a brick wall, not making any moves, losing or gaining any positions. Here we go a lap down by 12 to go, finishing exactly where you think. His number, 14th. And that's it. Boyer's 16-year career in the books, done and over. 
and this race a perfect representation of Boyer's career as I saw it. Qualifying good or decent, running the single digits or the 30s or 20s, and finishing higher on the 15th scale. To further prove my point, here are the amount of times he finished between 9th and 16th this season. Here are the amount of times he finished worse than that, and better. That was also excluding the iRacing Pro Invitation as well. Also, here are the final stats for Boyer's 2020 season. I'll leave those up for a bit while I ramble. But this about brings us to the end of this now 17-page script. I have legitimately no clue how long this will take to edit. Hopefully I'll get this out by the new year, but we'll see how things play out. Uh, before we end things off though, I do want to state a couple things. First thing is, is that after 2020, Clint went to go work with Fox's NASCAR broadcasting team in which he had an absolute blast and had a super good dynamic with his old rival, Jeff Gordon. I really do think that out of the three three seasons of NASCAR that I've watched, those two have been the greatest. However, unfortunately, Jeff would leave at the end of 2021, which I get, you don't want to get that Hedrick Home Sports bag, but every race after that, Nat Boyer's commentating, he became more and more enthusiastic, to at least to me, that is. Here and there, you would get odd flashes where he genuinely did seem excited about the sport, where he'd become his old boy or self for a little bit. The one that made you laugh, the one that seemed so energetic, and it just sucks to see a driver who clearly loved this sport, loved NASCAR, just seem to fall out of love with it. And this definitely could be from the massive amount of Fox criticism, which I do have a slight bias here, or I, I say slight, it's major. It's, I, which I, I dislike the criticism toward Fox because that's, you know, that's my favorite driver up there, but. I do get a lot of it. Uh, Fox's handling of the truck series is absolutely abhorrent. Perhaps, of course, with his old teammate Kevin Harvick in the booth this year, he could have some life brought back to him, but I don't know. The network isn't helping either with it overall just sucking and pretty much probably taking the fun out of him, but I, I, wait a minute, I think I just said the same thing twice. Okay, maybe we should wrap this up. Point is, I still love seeing and hearing Boyer in the booth every race from the Daytona 500 to the TV handover in Sonoma. But I think what I really want to see happen is him to get back in a race car. And he has talked about having that so-called racing itch. I'll find the article if I can. But maybe one day he'll scratch that itch. Maybe one day he'll hop back in a race car. So yeah, that's it. That's Boyer's 2020 season in one surely massively long video. To leave you off with one more point, um, I did eventually plan for this to be from my perspective, but I thought that that might have been a little bit weird pacing wise. I'm sure that this video is most likely an absolute wreck pacing wise because I can't do pacing for the life of me. I'm sure the pacing is going to be super quick, but I did my best and my best is usually not that good when it comes to pacing. I also did originally try to make this video 10 to 20 minutes long, but I, my, my, this, my hands wrote a little bit too much script, so yeah. Anyways. Thank you for making it to the end of this video. I'm sure it's insanely long. And if you skip to the end, I don't like you. But either way, enjoy these credits. And enjoy I've Been Thinking It Over by Ryan Carlson.